good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Superintendent's Art Gallery. It's exciting to have you here. Um, I just want to thank you guys for showing up, and I also want to recognize that it seems like we have a good representation here of everybody who was given the honor of coming here for our Superintendent's Art Gallery. Also want to thank our parents who are attending, as well as our teachers who are attending, the principals, and um, also Ms. Pauls and Mr. Paluski and our board members. Um, we want to thank you for joining us to celebrate your children's artistic success. In Queen Anne's County Public Schools, every student has access to quality arts education because we believe the arts are essential. They teach students innumerable lessons. Practice makes perfect. Small differences can have large effects. Collaboration leads to creativity. The arts also teach children that there are several paths to take when approaching problems and that all problems can have more than one solution, an invaluable 21st century skill. In addition, research has also shown impressive benefits of arts education on the entire school culture, especially student motivation, attitudes, and attendance. Numerous reports discuss the ways that increased access and involvement in arts education encourage students to stay in school, succeed in school, succeed in life, and succeed in work. Again, thank you for coming together tonight to celebrate your children's successes and to support the vital work that our arts educators provide. The way the evening is going to run is this. Mr. Paluski is going to share with you some comments about our program. After this, then um, we are going to recognize each student and their art teacher will come up and talk about the great things about that student. And then the principals will come up as well for a photo opportunity with um, our assistant superintendent, our superintendent, and our board members. Okay, and without further ado, Mr. Greg Paluski. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Uh, first, I'd like to thank uh, Ms. Julia Alley, who has done a tremendous job as our supervisor of the Visual and Performing Arts that has put this evening together and this does a phenomenal job behind the scenes getting student artwork and getting it here to the Board of Education, getting it framed and really showcasing it. So please join me in a round of applause of thanking her and her leadership. I'd also like to recognize uh, our Board of Education members that are here uh, this evening, uh, Mrs. Tammy Harper, as well as uh, Captain Beverly Kelly, that are huge supporters and advocates for our school system. Please give them a round of applause for their continued support. And certainly, uh, tonight wouldn't be possible without our administrators as well as our teachers that inspire our children to be the best that they can be. And we thank them for being here this evening. But tonight is not about any of those people that I just mentioned. Tonight is about our artists and what art brings to Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Life in general, our society would not be where it is today if it weren't for artists that inspired that creative side that comes with creative problem solving and being able to use the arts as a way to express individuals to be able to create and to be able to innovate and that's one side of the visual arts which is actually what we're going to be celebrating tonight and in the future we're actually going to celebrate the performing arts as well because each of those are equally important and to all of our artists that we're going to showcase whether our youngest artists or our, our high school artists I leave you with this one piece of advice and parents I want to leave you with the same advice keep encouraging them to create. Being creative and fostering your love of art shouldn't stop. And to continue that through a lifelong journey of creating and, and giving back your talents to others to be able to showcase the expression of your work. So tonight is about you. Tonight is about showing us mm -hmm. your creative side and to be able to celebrate as a school system the great accomplishments that our school system provides for all of our students. So I welcome you and I'm excited to showcase and celebrate our youngest artists. 
There are three other people that I would like to thank. Uh, one is back there, the handsome man in the green sweater, Jeff Stray, <laughs> and Geneva Harrison up here, and also Kim Adams, who's sitting right here, who helped, she designed, used her artistic principles in designing the brochure tonight. So thank yeah. you very much also for what you've done to make this night possible. <laughs> the first school that we are going to be recognizing the artist is Darcy Bouchat. Is that pronounced correctly? And Lawrence Boucher, thank you very much. And Lawrence Dunn, principal, is going to be presenting Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Darcy is a fifth grade student in Mr. Sage's class, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, this is, and this was written by Mrs. Pedraza, who couldn't be here tonight. But this is your second year with Darcy. She's always, uh, she does, with her, uh, she puts a lot of efforts in her project, and has done a wonderful job with this one as well. In the spooky landscape, my students learned how to create the illusion of depth using one point perspective and shading techniques with soft pastels. We also spent a lot of time learning to draw realistic trees without leaves. Darcy did a beautiful job working with one point perspective, a sometimes challenging concept for fifth graders, and really captures the moment in the middle of the night on a great, on a gravel road. Okay. All right, that didn't help. On a gravel road with an ominous feeling as the moonlight shines on the fog that lingers over the ground. Darcy particularly enjoyed, thank you. Darcy particularly enjoyed blending with her soft pastels as she worked. Of course, we began working on these before. Th Halloween, so everyone had plenty of inspiration to get into the spooky feeling. Outside of school, Darcy lives with her parents and two brothers. She loves to bake cakes and cupcakes, and likes gymnastics, ice skating, and Girl Scouts as well. Darcy's favorite subject in school, as you might guess, is art. art. She has a quiet way of taking everything in that I teach and doing whatever I've taught with such creativity and beautiful craftsmanship. She is the delight to have in class. And that was written by Ms. Pedraza, our art teacher. Yeah. Congratulations. We're all going to come over here now and take our group photograph, which is the way that we commemorate these moments. Two, three. Second student and school and principal that we are having come up for the presentation is the artist is Emily Bast from Centerville Elementary School. And tonight, Mrs. Farnell, who might be even a little cuter, I don't know. Probably not. Yes, please. It's okay. It's all good. It's okay. Your artwork's going to be right up here. Yes. Do you want your dad to stay with you? Okay, can you turn around this way? There we go. Great. Good evening, everyone. Our art teacher, uh, Mrs. Adams, could not be here tonight, so she has uh, written an explanation for me that I will be sharing with you this evening. Emily is a first grader at Centerville Elementary School in Mrs. Emery's class. She is very pleasant and a very hardworking student. Emily is kind to her classmates and has great listening skills. She works very thoughtfully and stays focused on her work throughout the entire creative process. Planning ahead and working hard are strong skills Emily has, and she uses them wonderfully throughout her artwork. Emily's artwork on display this evening shows careful craftsmanship throughout her entire art piece. Her portrait is well planned and drawn. She outlined and painted with great care and thoughtfulness. She even included some crayon resist detail in the background, which was inspired by Van Gogh's portrait of his postman.
Emily's finished artwork is an eye-catching piece, and we are very proud to have her awesome artwork on display here this evening. Emily, congratulations. Our next student artist is Mackie Zirfus from Churchill Elementary School. Our teacher is Cassandra Hostler, and Jackie Wilhelm is the principal. So, Mackie, can you come up? Oh. Well, we will read. We'll have Miss Hostler share. I thought she was coming, so that's a bummer. Mackie is a kindergartner at Churchill Elementary School in Mrs. Forte's class. This is my first year knowing her, and I'm really um, a special art teacher because I met her. She's very talented, as you can see. Mackie has two brothers who are younger. She enjoys being a big sister, telling them what and how to do everything, but she admits that very happily. She enjoys playing with them and her, bro her brothers and her family. Oh. There she is. <laughs> 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 is it okay if I start over? Perfect timing. So everybody, this is Mackie. This is much better than our first start, so I'm happy she's here. This is Mackie. She's in Mrs. Forte's class at Churchill Elementary School. She is the proud big sister of two brothers named Tills and Bo. She enjoys being a big sister in all of those roles that that includes. Mackie enjoys playing with her friends and her brothers. Her favorite part, and I thought this was awesome, of school is learning how to read. That just made my heart really warm. She also likes art, and she loves painting and creating art related to fish. Her artwork uh, behind me is related to and inspired by Vincent Van Gogh's red poppies. We did not do the red poppies. Instead, we chose a um, natural landscape. Our goal was to establish depth and perspective, which she did perfectly. She used um, oil pastels, and she also used um, some resist with that and watercolor. Her landscape demonstrates an understanding of spatial concept as well as creativity and excellent craftsmanship. I am very proud of you, Mackie, and I look forward to seeing all of your skills flourish over the next years. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Our next artist is from Graysonville Elementary School. Uh, principal at Graysonville Elementary School is Carol Camp. Uh, teacher is Megan Spence, and the young artist is Walter George. So, Walter, come on up. Hello. Good evening, everybody. Sorry, I don't normally sound like this great, um, but life of a school teacher, you know. Uh, the picture you see before you is called uh, Rainbow Lion, and it is by this buddy and artist, Walter George, in kindergarten. It's his first time in the art room this year, and he is in Ms. Cole's class. I have the pleasure of um, teaching him actually three times a week in um, the art room, PE, and computer lab. So I get to uh, have him three times a week. So looking at this picture, you can tell that Walter really followed the directions very carefully, and he was very colorful and creative with his color choices. Um, this is the first project of the school year that I create with this grade level. To introduce the, the students to what art is and what we learn in art, I chose to discuss color with um, this project. The students were able to learn the rainbow colors as well as the primary and the secondary colors. We watched several videos about how crayons were made in the Crayola factory, which they were extremely excited about. Um, and we also watched a few videos on primary and secondary colors that were a lot of sing-along fun videos as well. Um, looking at Walter's picture, you can see how rich and vibrant the colors are and how they pop off the paper. 
His lines that he used to create the lion's mane show a great deal of movement as the lion is moving his head back and forth. Also, the lion's eyes are green, almost like he's gazing at you. I did introduce um, oil pastels to kindergarten right off the bat. Um, I thought it was something to be fun and engaging and slightly messy that they were um, able to get their hands on. Um, Walter, you can see in his picture that he's very eager to learn and also try his best while he's in art. He's constantly asking questions about his projects and what we are gonna make in art. He also, is, also seems very super excited when he comes to me each week and it's very, very noticeable in his artwork. Um, he's a great student to have in class and he motivates himself as well as others while his positive attitude never fails and when given a challenge, especially with this project. I did ask Walter a couple of questions, what he enjoys to do outside of school and what he enjoys to do in school. Um, he does have a younger sister and his favorite time of the day is playing at centers. Um, and his favorite sport is baseball and his favorite team is the Baltimore Orioles. So, congratulations, good job, Walter. Our next featured artist is Madison Branham, who's in fourth grade at Kennard Elementary School. His art teacher is Ms. Jackie Wheeler. His principal is Ms. Michelle Carey, so come on up. Yeah. Do um, Madison is uh, in Miss Goldman's fourth grade class, and she is nine years old. She's from a family of seven, and she has two cats and a dog. And I asked Madison, I said, what do you want to be when you grow up? And she said, an elementary school teacher. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a great answer. And I asked her what her favorite classes were, are, and she said gym and art. Uh, so Madison's picture here is a farm scene. And this grew out of uh, something that we're working on in school, art to remember. And third graders come in and they're so nervous, they don't, they, they, they'll tell you, I can't draw that. that, that's hard. So what I did was, the boy showed the boys and girls how to break everything down into basic shapes. If you break everything down into one shape at a time and then add onto it, so much easier to do, isn't it? Yeah. And I think Madison captured um, exactly what she wanted to say in her drawing. Um, I asked Madison, I said, so why did you pick a farm scene? She told me that she lives on a farm, she belongs to the 4-H, and that she has pigs. And I said, well, do your pigs have names? And she said, oh yeah. Um, one of them is named Dolly Parton. One of them is named Tanya Tucker. And she also has a Kenny Chesney. So, um, this is Madison's picture of her farm. Okay, our next student artist and accompanying Sorry. principal, David Dulac, is Aubrey Klein. And her, the art teacher is Maria Sage. So please come on down and we'll hear more about your art. Aubrey Klein is a second grader in Ms. Schilling's class at Ken Island Elementary. She recently turned eight and she had a birthday over the holiday. And Aubrey lives with her family and her dog Brady and Chester. Her favorite subject in school is science. When Aubrey is not in school, she enjoys playing basketball and she's really fortunate her dad is also her coach. Um, her other hobbies include drawing, reading, soccer, and playing with her brothers Henry and Mac, and she said sometimes. <laughs> um, I asked Aubrey to tell me what she liked best about her project, and the name of the project is Tallbird. She said she really liked drawing the tall bird 
and she enjoyed drawing the legs because she could make her own choices on what type of lines to use. And she also really enjoyed using watercolors to paint the colorful background. Um, the Talbert project is inspired by the surrealist style of artwork. Um, especially we looked at the artwork of Salvador Dali. And the um, birds were to be made with extremely long legs. And the students had choices on the wings, the shape of the body, the different features of the bird. And then we would, with the background, we didn't make a traditional blue sky for the background. We used different bright colors, the pinks, the oranges, and the yellows. So the students were able to safely explore the line, shape, and color for the first time. So this was their first project for second grade. And they created a whimsical tall bird portrait, or project, excuse me. So thank you, Aubrey, for creating such an amazing piece of artwork. I'm very proud of you. I, you can tell her dedication and all her attention to detail. And she's a very creative young little artist. So thank you so much. Our next student artist is Chloe Smith, here with uh, his art teacher, Nicole Drennan, and his principal, Ms. Jennifer Schreckengast. Hello, everybody. This is Chloe. Chloe is a third grade student at Mattapique in Ms. Clater's class. She is an absolute sweetheart and just one of those students I truly wish I could see every day, every hour in art, all the time. She's always smiling and always offering to help everyone, including myself, during class. Her favorite subjects in art are art, I mean in school, are art and social studies. At home, Chloe says she likes to play board games. She likes to swing outside and of course, make art. Her favorite animal is a horse, and her favorite color is pink. Chloe has a lot of brothers and sisters. She's one of six children in her family. She loves spending time with her family, and especially loves the time that they went to the Outer Banks on vacation. Her favorite thing to use in art is oil pastels, but she also likes to draw and stuff, too. For this project, uh, third grade students looked at artwork done by the artist Matisse, specifically still life art. Chloe then drew a vase with various flowers in it using artificial flowers for inspiration. Chloe and her classmates explored them with oil pastel to add color and temper paint for the background. When we began this project, Chloe was immediately engaged and so excited to get started. Her class spent a lot of time looking at artwork done by the artist Matisse and talking about the colors that he used and she was always very eager to talk about what she saw in the art and how we could go about making our project. Uh, Chloe did a lot of practicing before drawing on her final paper of the vase and the flowers and used the concept of form and shape to draw her vase and when it came time to draw her flowers she was very meticulous in examining the artificial flower petals for ideas. We talked about shapes and how to draw them. When we began with oil pastel Chloe chose wonderful colors and blended them together beautifully taking time and was very careful about it. When it came time to paint the background, she was also very creative, and her craftsmanship continued to show. It came as no surprise that Chloe was an inspiration for her classmates for this project, and always works very hard, not only in art, but her teacher and all the other specials teachers agree that she's a wonderful student, works hard in every class, and I'm very proud of her. recognized is Sellersville Elementary School. So we got the names mixed up, but we'll get that fixed. Okay, and this is Cassie Hostler and Samira. Are you here? Come on up. This is Samira. She's a fourth grader at Southersville in Mrs. Joyner's class. I have been so lucky to teach a few of her siblings. She has four sisters and one brother, 
all very, very creative. I know also their potential and their creativity. They're just all very amazing, a whole very creative family. She has numerous talents and interests. This is probably one of my favorite interviews I've ever done. I found out some of her favorite things to do are outdoors. She likes to jump on the trampoline and she likes to play in the leaves. And I was wondering if you can do them both together. That would be super fun. Um, she loves to read and create art in school. She enjoys cooking. Her specialties include pizza, spaghetti, and anything at all that has to do with noodles. <laughs> she loves creating unicorns and horses as well. As well. Samira's art is a study of both lines and patterns. If you look closely when you see it, it is, has letters extended from top to bottom. And within that, you can see the different um, tools that she used for repetition of line and color. And she organized a balanced piece of artwork. We, did, we um, observed some graffiti in order to do this, and um, that inspiration carried over into her colorful design. She is, succeeds with all of her tasks, and she's got a really great eye for color. Currently, uh, we are doing collagraphs, and her design is so successful, and I just can't wait to see what will happen next with it. Um, she's excelling at everything she does, like I said, and I can't wait to see what she's going to do next. And the middle school, Mrs. Bachmiller, you're going to have some great stuff happening in the next few years. Our next student artist is Tally Miller, whose art teacher is Valerie Ortiz, and it seems like representing them this today would be Tracy Kenna, assistant principal at Centerville Middle School. Hello, this is uh, Talia Miller, um, seventh grade. This is my second year working with her, and I've really enjoyed watching her talent grow as an artist. Uh, she's very meticulous, um, and she enthusiastically ta tackles any challenge that I throw at her. Um, her hobbies include lacrosse, basketball, and being outside or hanging out with her friends. Uh, and when she's not playing sports, she likes to draw, paint, and make pottery. Um, Talia credits her older sister Olivia as one of uh, the people who inspires her for her joy in art and she also enjoys doing crafts with her mom and dad. Uh, they apparently call her the repurposer because she takes items uh, from around the house that no one uses anymore and turns them into decorations or items used for other purposes, which is awesome. Um, and uh, she has a turtle named Nuggets, a dog named Brewster, and four hermit crabs. So she's got pets covered there. Um, the uh, project Talia uh, was working on um, is uh, focusing on Keith Herring and actually the colors don't really do it justice um, right here but um, we learned about Keith Herring and uh, how he was an American artist, social activist, um, working in the 80s responding to the New York City culture and social issues and uh, the seventh grade they uh, looked and discussed um, his uh, public artworks which were um, public artworks that were on subways, um, legally, both illegally, um, and uh, also in galleries. We talked about semiotics and how this artist used symbols uh, to talk about emotions and social issues and how he used um, these neutral type figures uh, to express these kind of uh, feelings and emotions. And that was their challenge. Uh, they were also only given three primary colors, uh, the red, yellow, and blue, and black and white. And they had to make up uh, whatever color scheme they needed from those three colors. And uh, so um, Talia chose hers because of the meticulous um, way she um, mixed the paint, how she, how she created her um, drawing, her craftsmanship, and also applying the paint, but also her subject matter. With the climate and how, how the world seemed to be in this past year with so much going on, I just think that the theme and the message here could be interpreted in so many ways uh, with uh, the, the world turning constantly and people either supporting it, uh, you know, political things, social things. So I just thought it had a lot to say for people. Um, and and so I just thought it was a very dynamic image and that she um, did an impressive job with it. And I just want to share it with everybody. So thank you. Um, 
All right. One, two, three. Our next student artist is Jordan Hunter. Our teacher is Lucia Calloway. And let's see. Where is Mr. Lishner? Oh, there he is. Sorry. He's right behind You're blending. You're blending in there. I thought you were a student. There you go. Hi, Jordan. <laughs> this is truly an honor to be here with Jordan. Um, she's an eighth grader at Mattapique Middle School. And her piece here is probably the tiniest in the show, but amazing quality. It is a study in pointillism based on the artist Georges Chirat. And he, what he did with pointillism, she did a pretty good job with it, I'd say. She is so active. She's involved in both marching and jazz bands. In fact, didn't you have marching band practice after school today? Or Okay, yeah, I thought so. Okay, I thought I heard you down the, <laughs> down the hallway. Okay. Uh, Junior Honor Society, Student Government, and Destination Imagination Team. She's really busy, okay? Her Destination Imagination Team was first in the state of Maryland last year in the division of um, middle school, so I was very proud of her there. She excels in everything she puts her heart to, and that's about everything, <laughs> okay? She is extremely creative and a very compassionate and kind person who's always helping someone somewhere at some time. She's amazing. Um, she has two dogs and one brother, and she put, she put it in that order, I'm not sure what, <laughs> um, and lives in Stevensville. And it is certainly an honor to be with her and to be her art teacher and her help, helping person for Destination Imagination. So, Jordan, congratulations. Thank you. All right. One, two, three. Thank you. Um, our seventh grade student artist is Alexander Bradford, seventh grade student. Kevin Kintop is going to be presenting. To you. <laughs> All right. I, don't think I she couldn't have come it. up with anything better. <laughs> All right, well, I'm doing a solo act tonight. Um, Alex, uh, unfortunately, I guess, couldn't be here tonight, but I know that um, Ms. Schrader had something with her son. She did uh, let me know today, because we were talking about the piece of work you see behind me, because our seventh graders all had to do a perspective of a shoe. And she was one of a very, very small minority that didn't just do a side view. Um, she did the bottom view of the shoe. And, and Ms. Schrader said that um, that's just kind of the way she thinks. Um, she looks at things in a little bit different manner, but if you really look at the detail of it, every little bump every little thing that might be an imperfection on the bottom of the shoe, she hit. Like, she spent so much time doing those details. And Ms. Schrader says, with everything that she does in the art class, that's, what, that's how she is. She puts everything she has into it, and she lets every little detail show in her artwork. So it was, it was a no contest for Ms. Schrader. She wanted this piece to be shown um, at the board, and I'm very grateful that I got to come up and share it with everybody here tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Doesn't anybody want a picture of Mr. Kintop? No? <laughs> sorry. Okay. We got lots of It is Alexandra. I'm sorry, I was reading from there. Um, now, this is not Alexis Kopelman, but we will get that straight in a second. Um, but the next artist to, who has their work presented is Alexis Kopelman. And Vicki Bachmiller is the talented young art teacher, really. And that would be Mr. Sean Kenna, who is the principal of Sudlersville Middle School. Sadly, she couldn't be here today. Um, it is Alexis's work behind me. And this was created in the month of October. Um, it was National Hispanic Heritage Month. And our school hosts a dinner annually to, to honor and celebrate this event. And um, the molas were displayed 
all over the cafeteria so people could enjoy them while they were eating. It was just a beautiful sight. Her piece is multimedia, meaning it was made with many materials. It was made with yarn, um, craft paper, construction paper, and oil pastel. So it was a many layered process. The kids loved it, especially working with the yarn. Molos are traditionally done on fabric and we just incorporated some kind of texture using the yarn. It was the first time I had taught it, and I think they are fabulous. The kids got to choose the animal that they wanted to depict. They were given size, but that was about it. And then they just broke it down and made it beautiful with all the different colors. Um, Alexis is her favorite subject, to my dismay, she said, was math. And I said, really, Alexis, math is your favorite? She's like, well, I didn't think of art as being a subject. I'm like, really? Then really, what is it? And so she said, I like art too. Isn't that shocking? It's disappointing. Um, she likes to work with numbers and understands it more than other subjects. I asked her if she liked art, and she said, of course she did, that she liked it because she could work at her own pace, choose any colors that she wanted, and come up with her own creative ideas. She enjoys to cheer, and she enjoys walking around town with her cousins. And we're just, it's a shame she wasn't here to celebrate, but her work's awesome. Thank you. Our next student, now we are moving on to the high schools, Hannah Claggett with, with her teacher, Samantha McCoy-Smith. Thank you. Oh. Hi, everybody. Um, this is an artwork by Hannah Claggett, who unfortunately couldn't be here tonight. She's a ninth grader at our Kent Island High School Annex. Um, throughout the semester, Hannah has been pretty remarkable, as you can see with her work here. She has always completed incredibly high quality work and has already won Visual Arts Student of the Month. And she's only been in high school for a few months, so she's pretty impressive. Um, Part of what makes Hannah so special is her work ethic and her attentiveness to detail, which again, you can see here in her work. And with every project, she has worked harder and harder to improve, even though she started at such a high level to begin with. So every day she'll come in and she works her best and she takes the initiative to do better and she takes all the feedback that I offer her and applies it every single day, which is really special for a ninth grader especially sometimes. Um, the assignment was to take, we studied surrealist artists and you might not see it very well here, she chose, you're supposed to choose a theme, and her theme was the Arctic. So she was commenting on environmental issues as well as the fact that she likes polar bears, which is a pretty much direct quote. Um, so her mission was to create an accurate linear perspective with really excellent values and really excellent textures while transforming the school. So I think she did an incredible job, and she only continues to improve. Though she is not here, I'm really excited to see what she does with the rest of her high school career because I really think she'll be successful. Thank you. Thank you. Her pictures. principal is here, so if you want to come forward and accept her certificate. You can take a picture, Mr. Shepard. I don't know if she was here. Oh, I don't know, previous in eighth grade? Yes, she has been. Oh, you guys can take a picture. I'll oh, come on, let's take a picture. Let's just take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get a picture with John. I'm up here now. Okay. <laughs> we should just take a picture. It's after Thanksgiving. Here we go. <laughs> One, two, three. Yay. Thank you. And the last artist that we will be celebrating tonight is Jessica Diggs from Queen Anne's County High School. Tim Goodger is her art teacher, and her principal, Angela Holocker, is here. Jessica was homesick today, so she didn't come, and Mr. Goodger's son turned two today, so he's celebrating with cake and ice cream right now. So um, I was giving this for Jessica. Um, Jessica has always been a very flexible and willing participant in the artistic experience. She takes suggestion very well and is eager to try new things. For this reason, it wasn't surprising to see her tackle the relatively foreign medium of charcoal head on. Jessica has developed her charcoal still life to be a fine example of her ever-growing technical capability and her pursuit of excellence. A consummate artist, Jessica not only digs, 
that was his attempt to be funny. The <laughs> visual arts. She is also an active member of the International Thespian Society and an integral part of the Queen Anne's County High School Theater Program and Drama Club. In fact, she has performed in plays outside of school and in seven Queen Anne's County High School productions during her high school career, including the lead role of juror number eight in 12 Angry Men. Jessica also sang with our high school choir for two years and is the bass guitarist for the worship band at the Chestertown um, Church of the Nazarene. In the community, Jessica has made positive contributions as the event organizer for Chestertown's Harry Potter Festival and abroad during her mission trip to Jamaica, where she aided in the construction of a church. Jessica is also a member of our school's Spectrum Club and would like to attend the University of Arts in Philadelphia and use her artistry as an outlet to promote tolerance on all levels. Jessica is an excellent student, a wonderful artist, and an outstanding human being through and through. And Mr. Goodger said he anticipates great things, and so do I, for her in the future. Okay, I have, thank you all so much for coming tonight to celebrate your children's artwork and to celebrate the system and the, the teachers that are able to help them to create that artwork. Um, at the end of the evening, which is now, we're going to go out to the lobby and visit the pictures. Each of the children will be interviewed by the illustrious Mr. Strait, and their video will be shown on Ch Channel 7 TV, and so they will be superstars. Um, there are also snacks, cookies, vegetables, cheese, <laughs> fruit, those kinds of things out there as well. So we thank you again for sharing your children with us. Thank you.